In this video, I'm going to talk about the second moment of area and how to derive it from first principles. The second moment of area is a measure of how well something resists bending. The, moment, the second moment of area, i, about some reference axis, x, is equal to the integral of y squared dA. y is the perpendicular distance from the reference axis to the element area, dA, where, and dA is the element area. OK, so I've drawn a rectangle here of width B and height D, and I've arranged it on a pair of axes such that the centroid of the rectangle is at 0, 0. I've also highlighted an elemental strip of this rectangle of width B and height delta X which is the distance x from the axis. Now I can apply this formula to the shape in order to get the second moment of area of this rectangle. So if we say that i about x is equal to the integral, now we want to go across the whole area. And from the way I've drawn my strips, you should be able to see that the limits we need to take are from minus d over 2, i.e. from here, all the way up to d over 2. So they're my limits. The perpendicular distance from the reference axis, x, to the element I've defined as x. So that's x squared because it's a y squared term here. Now the element, elemental area is b times delta x. So that's dA. Now if we take and evaluate this integral, we end up with 1 third x cubed b between minus d over 2 and d over 2 and we evaluate with these limits, it's equal to 1 third times x cubed, so that's d cubed over half cubed, which is 8, and that's times by b, and it's minus, minus 1 third d cubed over 8 b. It's minus, of course, because we've got a minus times a minus times a minus, this ends up being a negative term. We've got a minus a minus, which ends up being a plus, we evaluate the denominator here, we have 3 times 8, which is 24. So we end up with d cubed b over 24 plus minus minus d cubed b over 24, which we end up with the result d cubed b over 12. Now, does this make sense to us? Well, if we take a long slender member. It makes sense to us that this is the cube term because it's going to be far easier to bend this about this axis vertically through it than it is about this axis. You can imagine trying to bend a, uh, a floorboard uh, through the center of it. Uh, it's much easier to do it along this direction than this direction. That's because D is the cube term here. OK, so that was for a rectangle through the center. We can do a very similar thing for the rectangle about one end, but I'm going to leave you to do that. The only difference would be that the limits, instead of being from d over 2 and minus d over 2, would be from 0 up to d, because we've effectively shifted this whole thing upwards by d over 2. I'm going to instead choose something that's a little bit more tricky. And that is a circle, fully drawn. Circle has a radius of r, and I'm going to cut it into a sector. It subtends an angle d theta, and I'm going to have an area element dA, which is the distance r from the center. If I draw my axis through the center here and define this as a theta, the distance, the angular distance from the horizontal line to the sector, we can start formulating our equation for the second moment of area. So the second moment of area i we call this x 
well, reference axis s, x is equal to the integral of y squared dA. Okay, well in this example, the area element, the distance from the axis is this distance in here. Which we should be able to see is r sine theta. If we, take, if we highlight this triangle in here, I'll draw it outside, we have a triangle that has r on the hypotenuse and theta in here. So this vertical distance is r sine theta. Now what about the area of this element here? There's a number of ways we can do this. The easiest way is to take the area of the sector and then differentiate that with respect to r. The area of a sector, you should know, is 1 half r squared theta. When we differentiate this with respect to r, so dA is equal to, that ends up being r dr d theta. So now if we substitute these in to the integral, we end up with i x is equal to the double integral because we're integrating, if you like, from 0 to the end here, but also all the way around the circle. So we're integrating all the way around the circle, and we're also integrating from 0 to r, and of y squared, well, y is equal to r sine theta, so it's r squared sine squared theta, times by the area element, which is r dr d theta, which is equal to, if I just collect the r cubes, 0, 2 pi, integral between 0 and r, of r cubed sine squared theta dr d theta. Again, just to justify limits, we're evaluating the sector first from 0 to the radius, and then we're evaluating these all the way around from 0 to 2 pi. Okay, so dealing with double integrals, we deal with the inner integral first, then we deal with the outer integral. And when we're dealing with the integral, if we're not res uh, integrating with respect to the variable we're talking about, we can consider it a constant. So, this is equal to the integral between 0 and 2 pi of r to the fourth over 4 between 0 and r of sine squared theta d theta. Effectively, the sine squared is treated as a constant for this, and so not considered. So that's equal to, once we substitute r into here, I'm going to pull it out the front as a constant, r to the fourth over 4 times the integral between 0 and 2 pi of sine squared theta d theta. So this, i just go across, I'll take this back up here now. So that's r to the fourth over 4 times the integral between 0 and 2 pi. Now we can't integrate products of sines, cosines, or, or tangents. So we're going to have to convert this into a double angle. Now I know that the sine squared theta is equal to 1 half minus 1 half cosine of 2 theta. I'm just using the double angle rule here, d theta. So when we do this, we end up with r to the fourth over 4 times by 1 half of theta minus 1 quarter the 2 comes out, divide by 2 when we integrate cos of a theta, times by sine of 2 theta. It's just integrating that. But that's now between 0 and 2 pi. If we substitute the 2 pi into sine, any multiple of pi for sine will produce 0. So this term becomes 0. 0 in for sine also produces 0. So it's only going to be 2 pi in for the first term, so that equals to r to the fourth over 4 times by 1 half 2 pi, which is equal to r to the fourth pi over 4. And that's our result for the second moment of area of a circle through its centre. Thank you for watching the video. 
I'll see you next time.